Thank you all for being here today. Uh, I'd like to first acknowledge all of the local, state, and federal tribal partners for diligently monitoring, collaborating, and informing the public about updates related to COVID-19, also known as the 2019 novel coronavirus. And while it might take a couple of minutes, I think it's extremely important to personally acknowledge each and every one of our government and health partner leaders who've come to join us here today. So we've got a lengthy list that's going to take a little bit, but I ask you to please bear with me. And I express my sincere thanks to these individuals for participating and helping us in this process and this discussion. Attorney General Aaron Ford, Speaker Jason Frierson, Senator Chris Brooks, representing Senate Majority Leader Nicole Canizaro. Senator Joe Hardy, representing Senate Minority Leader James Settlemeyer. Marilyn Kirkpatrick, Chair of the Clark County Commission and Vice Chair of the Southern Nevada Health District. Scott Black, Mayor Pro Tem, City Councilman of North Las Vegas and Chair of the Southern Nevada Health District. Representatives from the Nevada's Federal Delegation Zach Zaragoza with Senator Catherine Cortez Masto's office, Nelson Arajo with Senator Jackie Rosen's office, Cassandra Munez with Congresswoman Dina Titus's office, and Asha Jones with Congressman Stephen Horsford's office. George Tagliati, Director, Nevada Department of Public Safety. Richard Whitley, Director, Nevada Department of Health and Human Services. Melissa Peak Bullock, State Epidemiologist, Nevada Department of Health and Human Services. Dr. Mark DeBrava, Vice Chair, Nevada System Higher Education Board of Regents. Joan Ebert, Superintendent of Public Instruction, Nevada Department of Education. Dr. Mark Pandori, Director, Nevada State Public Health Lab. Dr. John Novak, Chair, Washoe County Health District. Jeff Quinn, Office of Public Health Preparedness Manager, Southern Nevada Health District. Dr. Vit Krauscher, Medical Investigator, Southern Nevada Health District. Dr. Furman Linguin, Acting Chief Medical Officer, Southern Nevada Health District. Bill Welsh, President and CEO, Nevada State Hospital Association. Dr. Christopher Lake, Executive Director of Community Resilience, Nevada State Hospital Association. Mason Van Howling, CEO of University Medical Center. Dr. Anthony Slonem, President, Renown Health. Rosemary Vasiliadis, Director of Aviation, McCarran International Airport. Additionally, right before this press conference, we held an updated joint briefing with everyone that you're seeing here behind me uh, and many others via teleconference in Northern Nevada. I'd like to recognize those folks as well. Congressman Mark Amaday's office, Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall's office, Senate Minority Leader James Settlemeyer, Assembly Minority Leader Dr. Robin Titus, Stacey Montooth, Director, Nevada Indian Commission. Joan Hall, President, Nevada Rural Hospital Partners. Representatives from the Carson City Health and Human Services, Director Nick Akar, Jessica Rapp, Public Health Preparedness Epidemiologist, Veronica Gales, Clinical Services Manager, and Marilee Mora, President, CEO, Reno Tahoe International Air Airport. I know that took a long time, but I wanted Nevadans to understand the large-scale collaboration taking place across the state of Nevada and the commitment of each of the individuals who have been working on this issue for months. They represent hundreds of more Nevadans in their respective fields and regions that they serve, all waking up every day with the same mission, to prepare and protect the health and safety of the public. There are many more agencies and individuals throughout the state we have been doing, who have been doing their part to monitor the situation and communicate preventative health strategies to the public, while also keeping my office aware of any updates. I feel reassured that as a result of their work, and I thank them for their service. Before we go any further, I want to lay out a few facts. Number one, as of right now, there are no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the state of Nevada. Number two, according to CDC for the general American public, who are unlikely to be exposed to this virus at this time, the immediate health risk from COVID-19 is considered low. And number three, at this time, there hasn't been a single COVID-19-related death in the United States. However, 
the disease, Centers for Disease Control recently acknowledged that more confirmed cases of COVID-19 are likely to be identified, included cases in the United States, and as governor, it is incumbent upon me to ensure that our state continue to prepare for any scenarios in this emerging and rapidly evolving situation. Today, I've brought together state, local, federal, and tribal partners who are working incredibly hard to monitor and prepare in a for the situation. In a few minutes, I will turn it over to them and discuss the status of these efforts and the conclusion of their statements, we will answer some questions. But before I do, I want to take a minute to go over some basic preventative measures that all Nevadans can take to stop the spread of COVID-19 and all communicable diseases. I realize this is going to sound a little bit like the advice I used to give my daughters when they were a little younger, but please bear with me. Practicing basic hygiene is still of the utmost importance. Specifically, washing your hands regularly and thoroughly is still the single most effective way to prevent the spread of all communicable diseases, including COVID-19. As soon as you get home from work, school, a press conference, or wherever you go, you should immediately wash your hands. If soap and water aren't available, use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Avoid touching your face, eyes, and nose. Cover your cough and sneeze with a tissue and then immediately discard it. If you don't have a tissue, cough into your elbow, like this. Uh, routinely, everybody liked that, cough in your elbow, huh? <laughs> Routinely clean, frequently touched surfaces and objects. And if you haven't done so yet, get your flu shot. And if you do get sick, please stay home from work, school, or other places where you're close and in frequent contact with other people. These are simple steps, but they're also the best way every Nevadan can take precautions. I understand that Nevadans have concerns and even fears about the coronavirus. But as UMC stated just the other day, the antidote to fear is knowledge and preparedness. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to prepare, not panic. We're going to choose collaboration over chaos. I again want to thank everyone here in Las Vegas today and across the state for their diligence, commitment, and collaborative efforts. In the coming weeks, we will be working hard on ensuring that accurate and relevant information continue to be shared with the public. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Melissa Peake Bullock, our state epidemiologist, along with Dr. Mark Pandori, director of Nevada State Public Health Lab, to provide an update and discuss state efforts in more detail. Oh, was it on the whole time? Good afternoon. I'm Melissa Peake Bullock, the Nevada State Epidemiologist. I'd first like to thank Governor Sislak for bringing us all together today on this very important topic. And I want to emphasize at this time that Nevada has no confirmed cases of novel coronavirus, otherwise known as COVID-19. And the risk to Nevada communities continues to be low. The state of Nevada has been working closely with our partners in the healthcare community and appreciate their dedication as we strive to protect the health of all Nevadans. Our collective goal is to keep Nevada communities safe. The Nevada Department of Health and Human Services, our local public health partners, the Nevada State Public Health Laboratory, and the Division of Emergency Management and other state partners have been monitoring the situation closely and are working collaboratively to ensure Nevada is prepared and equipped to detect, track, and isolate any potential cases that may occur. The state is following guidance from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, and we will continue to work with our partners to have open lines of communication and prepare in the event of an outbreak of COVID-19 in Nevada. The Department of Health and Human Services is coordinating our public health response internally with state agencies and with community partners. The plan of our ongoing public health response is to early detect and rapidly contain introductions of this virus in Nevada with the goal of delaying and ultimately preventing the spread of COVID-19. 
The state and our local health authorities, which include Southern Nevada Health District, Washoe County Health District, and Carson City Health and Human Services, are working diligently to monitor all returning travelers. These travelers are under public health surveillance for 14 days. During this period, these returning travelers are monitored for any symptoms consistent with COVID-19 and asked to self-quarantine. This process allows for early detection, isolation, and testing of potentially infected and infectious individuals. Nevada is one of the states that has labs equipped and authorized to perform the coronavirus testing. This has improved our response time on possible cases. All Nevadans that have met the CDC criteria as a potential case have been immediately isolated and, test and testing has occurred, and all the tests to date have been negative for COVID-19. Again, there's no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nevada, and sustained transmission of the virus is not occurring in the general public. At this time, the risk to Nevada communities is low, and we urge all Nevadans to practice individual hygiene, including proper hand washing and not touching your face, nose, mouth, and eyes with unwashed hands. While COVID-19 may be new to us, coronavirus in general is not. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause respiratory illness in humans. Novel coronavirus is spread in a very similar fashion as seasonal influenza, and transmission is thought to occur when infected persons cough or sneeze without covering their, their nose or mouth, and then can potentially be inhaled by those around them. The main symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. If you're feeling symptomatic, you need to contact your healthcare provider. And as a reminder, we are still in flu season. Seasonal influenza presents with very similar symptoms as COVID-19. And the best defense against seasonal influenza is to get vaccinated. Also to keep those around you healthy, it is important to cover your cough, wash your hands, and stay home when you're ill. Again, thank you to the governor for bringing us all together today. And thank you for our community partners statewide. I now want to turn this over to Mike, Mark Pandori to discuss the progress made on testing. Thank you, Melissa. My name is Mark Pandori. I'm the director of the Public Health Laboratory for the state of Nevada. As of February 11th, the Nevada State Public Health Laboratory has had the capability to test for COVID-19. The test is a molecular test, also known as a nucleic acid amplification test, and it has been shown in our lab to have sensitivity and specificity for COVID-19. Our capacity to test right now is in the order of several hundred specimens with the ability to obtain more chemicals to perform more testing from CDC in the next couple of weeks. We have trained several staff members in the public health laboratory to run this test so that we can minimize what is called the turnaround time that is maximize the efficiency by which we can get you results, but also so that we can offer the test with the greatest amount of availability and flexibility. And it's a reminder also that this Nevada State Public Health Lab remains in a constant state of availability and flexibility for testing for a variety of agents as we're a tier one select agents lab for bioterror and for a number of other organisms and in many ways this is a very similar situation so we're just doing our job as we're trained thank you thank you so much to our speakers for their providing the informative updates on ongoing state and local efforts regarding covid 19. okay i apologize i've got two more doctors Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fermin Legain. I'm acting chief officer for Southern Nevada Health District. Uh, I just want to talk briefly about uh, our response to this outbreak. Uh, the Southern Nevada Health District have been working with the, the state and federal agencies on this. We have also uh, held a meeting with our uh, local partners. Actually, this morning we have a, a meeting with all our first responders, hospitals, and all the community partners to discuss our response to uh, the coronavirus. Also, I want to mention that our uh, 
public health lab here in, in Las Vegas is also available for testing uh, coronavirus. Uh, we received the, the, the kit about a week ago, and since yesterday, uh, this kit is actually fully functional and ready for testing. So uh, we will be offering this service to all our hospitals and providers, and the testing will be based on CDC criteria for individual testing. I also want to, to say that we are monitoring travelers arriving from China uh, in coordination with the CDC. We receive information daily from, from the CDC and we follow up with, with those travelers. We educate the travelers about the signs and symptoms of this disease and we ask them to quickly communicate with us if, if there is any of those uh, respiratory symptoms uh, present. And also we educate them about uh, what they should do in case of they uh, present with any of those uh, signs of symptoms. Uh, so far, none of our uh, travelers have, has uh, notified any sign of symptoms and we don't have any confirmed case of this disease in, in Southern Nevada or the state at large. Uh, I also want to say that there have been uh, two travelers who uh, initially were identified as a, a person on their investigation because they presented uh, respiratory symptoms. Uh, those travelers were tested by the CDC and the result came back uh, negative. Uh, so uh, that's the situation we have right now. I also want to say that we have our pandemic response plans on, in place and we are work, working with, again, with our partners, just uh, reviewing our plans and making sure that we are up to date with the daily changes that we observe in this uh, disease. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Novak, please. Well, thank, thank you all. My name is John Novak. I am the chairman of the Washoe County District Board of Health. I'm proud to represent all our people that work very hard all the time to do this. And I want to let you know that we're very prepared. We've got a very robust uh, plan for all kinds of emergencies. And this is just one that we've been planning and working for for many, many years. And now we have started, we've activated our first level of notification and planning about two weeks ago. And that at this point is basically going through our inventories, making sure your cell phone numbers work, communication systems are all open, letting our basic partners know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and keeping them informed. And that's been about two weeks. Last night, we activated through the EOC, the Emergency Operations Center, we activated our level one in the county. That meaning we will do the same thing, make sure the operations, communications there, all our partners know about what we're doing, but what's probably even more important, now we've reached out to the broad group of people in our community that are our partners. And that, you know, that can be the water department, that's through Northern Nevada, electrical, all the utilities, the airport authorities, the bus, anybody that may be needed in the future to react to this. And I really gotta emphasize, we have no cases right now at all. So that's the best part of the news. And also yesterday, the uh, Washoe County School District sent home notification to all the parents Little things like you might have heard before, wash your hands, cough in your sleeve, wipe down local surfaces, and if you're traveling on basically any kind of public utility, take some wipes down, wipe down your seats on the planes, because you don't know what the poor people ahead of you have done. So we're trying to stay out there, reactive. Health departments are basically invisible. Nobody knows we're there until, like today, we want you to know we're, we're there. We're the ones that are gonna look out for you. We're gonna the ones that are gonna help you plan. And hopefully, nobody has to go any farther than that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from uh, Director Tagliati, the <clears throat> Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, Governor Sisolak and the Nevada Department of Public Safety have been in consistent communication regarding the coronavirus, ensuring that our Division of Emergency Management is engaged with our federal, state, tribal, and local partners on response planning and challenges presented by COVID-19. 
The Emergency Management Division is in communication with our partners and prepared to coordinate state support with our local and federal agencies. Governor Sisolak and the Department of Public Safety Division of Emergency Management have personal experience dealing with unexpected emergencies in the past, as well as preparing for potential or perceived emergencies. I want Nevadans to be assured that we take preparedness and emergency response seriously. It's what we do. The biggest threat to emergency management is panic. So as the governor said, DPS, Division of Emergency Management, are instead focusing on what we do best, planning and preparation. The health and safety of Nevadans and the protection of our communities has always been our number one priority and that won't change. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Director. Now I can begin. Thank you to our, all of our speakers today for providing informative updates on uh, COVID-19 um, issues. Before we open it up to questions and answers, I want to thank our federal delegation for their constant communication, collaboration, and advocacy on this issue at both the local and national levels. I want to assure you that we will continue sharing information and working with our members of Congress and U.S. Senators to ensure that Nevadans remain safe and protected as this situation develops. We are also in constant communication with the National Governors Association and exchanging information, especially as it relates to this situation. I can assure you that all of us are fighting on the behalf of our capital and our, our state, and sh they all share the mission to protect public safety and the health of Nevadans. I'd now like to turn it back to DHHS Director Richard Whitley and State Epidemiologist Melissa Peak Bullock, who will do their best to answer your questions or direct them to the appropriate agency representative in attendance today. And thank you. I want to again acknowledge that we have uh, assembled here, thanks to my Chief of Staff, Michelle White, an incredible group of experts in various fields as it relates to this, everything from airports to hospitals to public safety. Uh, to epidemiologists, and uh, we will do our best to answer any questions that you might have. So with that, I'd like to invite to come up, and if anybody had a question. You know, I, um, we get, the, this is Richard Whitley, Director for Health and Human Services. We, um, Richard Whitley, Health and Human Services Director. Uh, we're, we get the updates from CDC. I didn't hear the few months out. Um, I, I've heard longer than that, but it, is, but it is, if you think of viruses and how this is a new one and how rapidly in terms of testing and then uh, vaccine um, um, development, um, I, can, I would I would uh, be uh, wrong in trying to give you a, a date or time. That that's science, and it's happening. Working at a federal level with CDC, you know, um, you mentioned the current flu vaccine. Um, I think the governor was was uh, uh, putting across that we we want to normalize this. That um, you know that this is a virus, and you know we don't always. At a, at a science level, get it right with the flu vaccine each year. Sometimes it's better than others. Um, we do know it protects people, um, but uh, in terms of, of this particular virus, it's new, and um, and the uh, development of a vaccine is is occurring. Um, we have a link on our website at HHS HHS to uh, CDC where you you know as current as they're giving us information, we're sharing it with the public. Okay, I'm gonna, if we could ask you to repeat the question because people in the back can't hear Joe. So, um, I think the question was, um, what's the volume of testing that has occurred in the state, and is that testing free? Um, Melissa? I'll, Melissa, I'll do a phone record. Um, Mark, how, how many tests? No, if you want to come on up, please. 
We've performed the test on three occasions and it was negative in each case. Whoever the controls in the test, there's a positive and a negative control for every lab test. And those, the positive controls were positive and the negative controls were negative. Okay. I've got, is, what is the cost of the test? The test is currently free. Thank you. I've got to go to somebody else. The question is that we get a lot of tourists from California, and would we consider banning from tourists from California? The answer is we're not anticipating ever banning tourists coming here from California. We're not building a wall on the Nevada-California border. And I speak to Governor Newsom on a very regular basis. The question is that there were only uh, three tests performed, and what is the false negative percentage of the tests that are being performed? Okay. Overall, the, the false negative rate of the test has not been ascertained. Hi, thank you. This is uh, Richard Whitley, Director for Health and Human Services. Um, actually, one of the outcomes. No, the question oh, was, no. why are we not releasing the number of people that are who have been asked to self quarantine? Um, again, uh, Richard Whitley. Um, in in working with our local partners, uh, the local health districts. Um, we have determined, and they're okay with the state releasing statewide numbers. And so we will, we will do that. I, you bring up a good point. Um, just in looking at other states, they are posting those. And so we will uh, begin to do that as well. Um, not today. In, in, the question is, when will that be? And it will be in the very near future. Can you ask no, yes, sir. Well, I, the question is, is it because of the president's quick action? And my response to that is, this is uh, as nonpartisan of, a, a partisan of an issue as you could possibly find. Every agency, nationwide, statewide, and locally, is working together to protect all of our citizens. Yes. Jeff? The question is, do we have any idea how many reported cases of seasonal influenza? We've had in the state. Do we, do we have one of my hospital guys can do that? Or we can? We've had 562 cases at UMC since November 18th. UMC has had 562 cases since November 18th. I don't know if we're down, if you know those figures off the top of your head. No, no. top of my head. No. no. We can get back to you with that if you no, need that information. Excuse me. Yes, Can you estimate yeah. how many people we have in their what? Yeah. What? Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, Dr. Femil again from Southern Nevada Health Street. Uh, actually, the, the real number of influenza uh, patients is unknown any, anywhere in the world because uh, uh, most influenza uh, patients are not tested for influenza. So uh, when a patient goes to the hospital with respiratory sign and symptoms, uh, Physicians decide to test some of them based on different uh, conditions, but uh, most of the patients uh, that uh, are suffering from influenza are not actually confirmed because they are not tested. There is also a, a tool that health departments and the CDC use across the country that is called syndrome surveillance. And, and this is a surveillance looking at trends of respiratory diseases in the community. And what it does is just, instead of looking at the specific diagnosis of influenza, it, look at, it looks at something that is called influenza-like syndrome, which is kind of putting a pool of, of patients who might have fever or fever and cough or any combination of those. And then uh, based on, on, on that tool, 
the local health departments are monitoring what is the trend of respiratory diseases in the condition and and, and through that also uh, give an idea of how the influenza season is developing. Thank you. I have one more question. Okay, the question is what contingency plans do we have in line? We are working with all of the uh, upcoming events, the LVCBA and the Reno Convention Visitors Authority, as it relates to those specific events, and I don't want to get into hypotheticals about what could happen, but we're aware of that situation working with those agencies. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We appreciate you. And again, I want to thank this tremendous group I've got of experts that came forward for this discussion. Thank you.